Good morning. This is uh, Alex with Green Rev again. Uh, we have some phenomenal four or five advanced students here, and we're going to do a very advanced dissection, uh, one of a bullfrog, starfish, and of course the almighty pigeon. So please, tell your students, watch yourself, learn about biology. These are all obviously uh, heterotrophic organisms. They have very complex systems, they're multicellular, and they're in the kingdom of Animalia and the domain Eukaryota because their cells have nucleus or nuclei. So um, our, our wonderful student here, a cinematographer, will be going around as these advanced students dissect and they're going to talk to you about the different, you know, closed digestive system or open digestive system. Are they heterotrophs or autotrophs? Are they invertebrates or vertebrates? And hopefully identifying the organs correctly. So uh, without further ado, enjoy. And uh, before you go, the last time you think about animals being the only thing that moves, think again. All right? That was a horrible version of this, but this thing actually literally closes down. This is the sensitive plant. So animals aren't the only things that move in the real sense of that word. The sensitive plant literally shrinks and... Uh, don't think that just is a quality of the animal kingdom, okay? So what are you dissecting here? Well, I am dissecting a pigeon today. So right now, you see I'm cutting through the skin, through the feathers to try opening up its chest, see what organs it has. Okay, well, you have fun with that. What are you dissecting? I'm dissecting cow's eye, and I'm right now cutting into it to see, hopefully, some of the lens and the cornea, hopefully. Okay. Next. What are you boys over here dissecting? We are dissecting a female pigeon. How do you know that this one is female? Because um, you could tell because there is a drop pod uh, right above the anus. Okay, that's interesting. What are you dissecting? I am dissecting a frog, and right now I'm opening the mouth so I can enter the head, and inside the head I will then be identifying the part. Okay, cool. Have you broken into the abdominal cavity yet? Yeah, kind of. You can see some parts right Muscle. there. So I think that's might be the stomach. No, that's a big layer of muscle. So. That's the same thing. Ha have you identified if it is a male or a female? This is a female. How do you know? Because over the anus is a drop part or something. Okay. Have you broken into the eyeball yet? Not yet. The skin is very tough. Um, do you notice that you are squeezing juices out of the bottom of the eyeball? Yes, there are quite a lot of juices. What is all this muscular tissue surrounding the eyeball? Um, that will be the camera type eye. It's basically the uh, sort of muscle that surrounds the main part. Thank you. Have you boys broken into the abdominal cavity yet? We have almost broken in, but we have located the main feather, which is usually flapped out and used for flying and has many veins going through it. I see that? And the legs are here. And we've cut. Here you see the main feather, which, as he said before, is used for flying. And here are some of the legs, which you see have very sharp talons. The legs are used for there. walking and catching prey from a f out, out of While the air. Flying. Although you don't s normally see a pigeon on the s side of the road in New York City catching prey, this is what these talons are used for. Have you opened right. up the jaw yet? Yes, we have. Yes. And right now, as you can see, we're identifying the different parts of the, uh, of the mouth here. So you want to go ahead and tell us what we're looking at? These are the opening to, like, the, where it leads to the ears, and it leads to the S... Eustachian. Eustachian tubes. Good. And you go ahead and point to those. And then the, mouth open. the right here, these two holes, one yeah. here and one here, and then they lead on the outside. To the ear uh, up here. Good. What's the ear called on the, on the top? It's called the tampium. Tympanum? Or tympanum. tympanum. Good. Or tympanum. And then right here is the tongue, which um, can stretch extremely far when the frog is actually alive. Good. And it has like this ability to grasp food. Yeah. And, and this is amazing. Imagine if I mean, any animal, let alone a chameleon or a frog, any animal with the ability to 
to spread its tongue out, stretch it, you know, feet, sometimes off foot, sometimes even farther away to get um, its prey. I mean, that's, talk about it, evolutionary adaptation. Like that's like, of course they're going to survive. That, that's an amazing ability. So not only do they have massive muscles and they can jump far, but these frogs have the ability to, while they're just sitting there, you know, put out some, you know, really fast lasso-like thing, right, and bring their food back. Um, now, you know what's interesting about the frog? Do you see really visible teeth? They're right here. Good. And what kind here? of teeth are those called? These are the vine, vine, vine. Vomerin. Vomerin. Yeah, vomerin, vomerin, yeah, vomerin teeth. Teeth? And, and if you feel them, go ahead and feel them. They're hard, like, on yeah. teeth. And, and think about a fish hook, right? Like, yep. let, let's rewind. Uh, so when we're, when we're chewing a cow, we're chewing. So we've taken like? off both of the wings, oh, right. and okay. we have the... We're peeling away the outer layer of skin and getting to the muscle in the abdominal cavity. So... Yeah. Mr. Eyeball over here, how are you doing? Well, I figured out the skin is too tough to actually uh, cut through, so I'm just going to try shedding some layers off of it. How are you doing, Omar? I see you fully removed the feathers. I have. So it's very tough to get into this muscle because it's a really tough skin. You can see I kind of made some progress, but it's really hard to open. So, as I try to cut in, it kind of opens a little bit. Okay, you can use the pins to kind of pry that open if you want. You can push that against the feather. See? That's well, you can the see how layer big that layer of muscle is. Long way to go. Continue on your adventures. Does that go in or does it go in this way? Where do you think it swallows its food? This way. To which hole? That one? Or the other one? This one I can't push anymore. Alright, and go through that one. And then this one. So that's the glottis. Can get through a little bit. Right, and yeah. the humans have an epiglottis which closes and opens, depending on whether they're breathing or, or swallowing or, you know. Um, eating. You ever like, have a moment where you, you're chewing and breathing at the same time and it goes down the wrong pipe and you have to cough it back up? Mm -hmm. That's what your epiglottis is supposed to do. It's supposed to prevent that from happening. So what um, is that other hole, the esophagus? That, well, we're looking right now at the glottis, and right behind the glottis is the esophagus, which then connects so the digestive is. system. So though you can't hear it, go back. Yeah, if it was alive, you'd be able to, you know, maybe you can, it's, it's dead. But So it's a little bit harder, but that is, so we have the respiratory system opening there, and then, you know, the first one, the glottis, point to it. So the lattice is here. And, and then we have the esophagus in the back, which is the Jeez, opening to the digestive, tra digestive tract. Good. All right, I think we're ready to uh, do internal anatomy. Let's do it. How are you doing on opening? So we've peeled back the feathers, and now we're getting into the abdominal cap thing. Um, and, uh, and we the have... main bone is here. And we have the main bone stretching across the main um, stomach of the... Of the Pigeon. So the main bone is pretty hard, so we're trying to cut around it to get inside. So like and you just cut right through it. Well, we're cutting around it. Got it. Right. So thank you. Look. So I've officially you just cut through the camera type eye, and I don't know if you can see this, but I'm starting to cut. In this light blue part right here, it's very hard actually. And that's the photoreceptor cells. I'm starting to cut into those. All right, so. I found out that cutting through the muscle was basically useless because it's really thick. So I tried a different approach, like cutting around it. And this is what we've gotten so far. As you can see, you can see yeah. all the internal organs now. This is the liver, correct? Yeah. And this blue thing is probably the bladder. Mm -hmm. All right, good luck. I'll be back in a few minutes.
Okay. Like a smaller. So what are you guys oh, doing yeah, now? Yeah, the juicy one. Now we're starting the main dissection, where I'm gonna look at the internal organs. Mm -hmm. So I'm cutting in, and then I'm pulling up just to get the skin, so I don't damage any organ. Beautiful. And while we're doing this, can you tell us what type, if you could classify this animal, how would you start classifying it? Well, it's domain, eukaryota. Its kingdom is animalia. Mm -hmm. um, its phylum is um, chordata. Is and then class. I have to know that, but yeah. I don't know the I class to, I, Actually, I have to look that up, but it's found chordata, um, but um, it should be. And then dominant. It, it, either way, you, you know that it, it is a vertebrate, uh, it is an amphibian, right? And uh, do you know whether it is warm or cold-blooded? Frogs are... Good, because they get their energy where? From uh, being warmer. Right, and from what? Them. What do they have to do every day in order to stay warm? Move. Right, but, but in order and to warm up, but often you see reptiles and amphibians doing what? If you're out hiking or floating, you might see them doing what to warm up? We have internal heat, right? We digest food and we produce heat from our inside of our body. So these fr frogs and reptiles can't do this. So they get their heat from what? From the sitting in the sunlight. Sunlight, very good. So those ectotherms, and they get their energy from the sun, uh, which is really weird compared to what we do. Um, so they rely upon the sun for homeostasis. Good, I like how you're using proper safety procedures you're cutting away from your body good so what are you doing here so okay so we are taking out the main muscle in the cavity so what we have found so far is we have found the liver and the bladder and if we peel away all this skin we should see the heart the heart is two times the size of many other hearts that are in the size of this animal. Okay. Um, and it pumps around, it beats around 110 times a minute when a human heart beats around 70 times. And it is two so times the size because flying is a strenuous activity for all these animals. I'm still cutting, but let me just talk about the, so this is a cow's eye, and the cow is actually a vertebrate, which means it has obviously a backbone, and uh, it, it's a vegetarian and a non-vegetarian, and the cow's eye has uh, several parts, which I can list for you which were the lens, cornea, camera type eye, optic nerve, and the photo photoreceptor cells. And I think you can see it better now. This light blue part, uh, compare this light blue part to this part, and you'll notice that we're digging into, uh, cutting into some of uh, the photoreceptor cells. And just now I squeezed it and it's re releasing some sort of black uh, liquid, black juices. Mm -hmm. so, so what's so unique about the bird compared to the mammal? You know, like, like let's just like talk about like in generally here. We have, I mean, look at this internal anatomy. You have, what, what is this? Right here, it's just like a, a giant muscle. Yeah, wow, look at that muscle. That is substantial, right? Yeah, and right behind it is uh, the heart, as you can see, where we cut it out. And then the other organs, like the liver, the mm -hmm. bladder. Good. Right now, I'm trying to find the stomach, but mm -hmm. I, I can. I don't know where. You will find it. But so, like, to, looking at the external anatomy and the internal anatomy of the pigeon, that is massive. Like, that yeah. is massive. That's why we eat these birds for the breast meat, right? They have massive muscles. Think of they have to fly, right? And, and that's pretty impressive. This also, if you look at the bones, we know the bones are hollow. 
allowing them to have you know lighter weight and greater lift. So um, these almost look angelic here, but this is truly one of the most impressive animals. The ability to fly, humans have been fascinated with that for, for years, and um, I mean, it's truly uh, biomimicry at its best, trying to mimic flight. Um, so you see the rib cage, we have the liver here, right? Yeah. All right. So the bladder. The bladder. So if we start cutting up these internal organs, we will hopefully be able to identify and see other systems and muscles. Now, is this, does this have a closed circulatory system? What? Does it have a closed circulatory system? Yes. What about a closed digestive system? Um, yeah, that has one as well. So how do we know if things are closed or open, the systems? Well, the system for a digestive, mm -hmm. it has, it's closed because it has one way out, one way in and one way out. That's true, it's a one-way digestive system, but how do you know something's closed or open because they have what? How are you doing on the frog? Good, I opened the skin, which is all the veins, and then this is muscle, which and goes like that. You see that you now see a collection of eggs, showing that it is a female. Yes, and um, it's also, to show that it's a female, it's larger than the male, and male mm -hmm. frogs are smaller in general. And this muscle is like the abdomens, so... I'm cutting through it, and it's like stronger muscle, so it's more, it's harder to cut through. Cool. Have you guys found the heart yet? Yes, we are yeah. actually taking it out right now. The heart goes in here. There's the liver, and you can see the part that the heart goes into. The see heart would go how right brownish in red there. Is. Yeah. Because the liver was so blood rich, then you can yeah, see the, the heart. Yeah, the liver would filter out the, the liver. stuff. And we still right, have actually a little heart. liver in there. Yeah. So the and heart the is actually a four chambered heart. Chambered? It, yeah, okay. Yeah, so if you could see, there are little veins slash arteries coming out, which would give all of the blood circulating through the bird. So the bigger ones would most likely be arteries carrying fresh blood that just got oxygen into it away from the heart, but the smaller ones would most likely be carrying blood to the heart that is oxygen deprived. Okay, so now our main goal is to take out the intestines and then we're going to go inside its head. Okay. Good luck. <laughs>